Hi, I'm Arlen Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I have got another episode of March Character Creation Mayhem for you guys. Um, we're doing something a little bit different today, which is to say that a number of my, um, especially more recent episodes, have been on kind of lighter games, games with simpler character creation, not as many steps, things like that. Um, and part of that is, of course, because of the, the nature of the project and the way that when I get behind, it is often much easier to uh, do character creation for a game that um, does not have quite as much um, going on in it often. So that's a whole thing, right? Um, anyway, the point of all of that being that today we are doing something different. We are going to be doing... Um, character creation for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, um, which is not a light game with relatively quick character creation. Um, so we're going to see how all of this goes. Um, I am using a couple of options, or specifically one major option, which is not a big deal at first level, but would be a bigger deal later on. Um, we're not going to be an alchemist, so I, I'm not showing the alchemy tab on here. Um, and then I've done a couple of things here. Um, we're also going to do, whatchamacallit, where is it? I don't remember. Um, specifically, one of the variant rules that this sheet supports is proficiency without level. And proficiency without level essentially um, causes the number growth to happen a little bit differently in Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which is to say that normally having proficiency in a skill means that you add a flat bonus and your attribute modifier and your level. And you don't get your level in anything that you're not at least proficient in. Um, and what that means is that basically as the game goes on, a character gets um, sort of more and more focused in a lot of ways that, you know, to keep up with the math, they can't really do as much of kind of, you know, doing all of the random things, right? So if you have a character with like a high wisdom, but who only has proficiency in half of the different wisdom skills, those are the skills they're going to be able to still succeed regularly at. And the other ones, as that um, target number set by the kind of general level of the campaign increases, um, those other skills are going to be less and less regular to succeed at in general because the the attribute bonus from the high wisdom is going to be less and less relevant to that sort of thing right that's sort of part of the the thing um i really like proficiency without level because i think it works for a much more kind of um, character agnostic world in a lot of ways um, the proficiency with level things I think it means that you kind of have to really center the game on the player characters which is not a bad thing by any means but it's one of those things that I am I'm really interested in trying these alternate rules and there are a couple of other alternate rules in the game mastery guide um, which I don't even remember I don't think I have a physical copy of the Game Mastery Guide, um, but I have a PDF, and then also all of those rules are on the Archives of Nethys, which if you don't know, the Archives of Nethys is where Paizo puts basically all of the rules content for all three of their games, which is kind of crazy because, like, you can you can totally play, you know, Pathfinder 1 or Starfinder or Pathfinder 2 without buying any books at all just by using the Archives of Nethys website that it has so much stuff in it, um, which is, is, yeah, really wild. I mean, I think it is worth buying those books because they are um, well-made. Paizo makes good products and they, um, you know, have quality art and all of that sort of stuff. And if you're the sort of person who likes to have physical books to use, obviously you don't really get that with just using the Archives of Nethys website. But anyway, um, the point being that if you're interested in trying out this game, you don't necessarily need to um, buy any of the books. So let's do, let's be Arlen as the player name. Um, we're also going to use a couple of other minor things. Um, so unfortunately, the sheet doesn't support all of the different variant rules in um, the uh, Game Mastery Guide that come from the Game Mastery Guide. Um, in particular, there are a couple that I would really like to try, um, but I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to do that sort of thing, essentially. 
Um, so for instance, there's an alternative scores alternate rule that basically combines strength and constitution and then splits dexterity into two, which is, I think, really cool. And it, it it's kind of a way to reflect the idea that um, each of the different ability scores has sort of the same mechanical weight, which is to say that as with many games um, that use the sort of core six stats, um, sometimes people, especially people like me who like to play kind of tough fighty types will say, well, wait a second, right? Like, you know, I am a, a fighter and so I need to be kind of tanky and put points into strength to hit things and constitution to survive getting hit. But the character that doesn't need to tank, you know, the wizard, he gets to put all his points into intelligence and just cast fun spells. Like, how is that? cool so anyway I, I think it would be interesting to try some of those alternate rules there's also a whole um stamina system alternate rule that i think is really cool um because it basically divides your hit points into kind of hit points and stamina points and that basically allows you to um kind of you can heal the stamina points really really quickly but you can't heal the hit points quite as quickly naturally um and so as a result you can kind of shrug off kind of lighter and easier fights and just sort of you know catch your breath for a few seconds and be like oh my stamina is back that sort of thing um there's also the free archetype rules which definitely make characters a little more powerful but also um I think are a really cool way to add some flexibility to a lot of the characters, give them a little bit more of kind of, you know, interesting kind of tweaks that they can make to the sort of core character concept without necessarily feeling like they are getting um, a reduced power level by kind of moving away from what they're good at. Because I think that's one of the, the things that is inherent to Pathfinder 2nd Edition is that, you know, characters kind of have to you know stay on parity with what they're facing because of the way the math works and so if you you know decide well i haven't done you know i have a low intelligence score relative to the wizard but i think it would be really fun to add some spell casting it's kind of like well but you know your character is going to suffer because of that in the things that they do instead of sort of focusing on what they're supposed to be good at and free archetype kind of helps with that um so that's a, a whole thing right um, anyway, so the, what I'm saying is there's some really cool alternate rules in the Game Mastery Guide um, that are totally worth checking out if you are interested in that sort of thing. Um, so in particularly, um, in particular, um, we are going to use some of the rules, the, so the, the alternate proficiency system uh, checkbox has been checked and then also we are going to use the deep backgrounds rules from the um, the game mastery guide which adds some really cool stuff I think um, so I yeah we're gonna do that sort of thing and that's gonna add a little more of kind of flexibility and stuff to this stuff so anyway um, we're gonna gonna add some interesting kind of random elements to this particular uh, uh, thing right? So um, the character. So we start off all of the character scores, ability scores start at 10. Um, and then we're going to um, select an ancestry. So we need to choose some ancestry stuff. Hmm, what should we be? Um... I don't know. There's a number of interesting stuff. I've played a number of different characters in Pathfinder 2. I most recently have play been playing uh, a little bit of a lizard folk swashbuckler who is a really cool um, character. I also, I, I really like playing androids, but I think I'm going to avoid doing um, just, just kind of go into android because um, that seems a little classic for me i think what i will do is be a hobgoblin that sounds interesting hobgoblins um are uh yeah they're they're nearly as tall as humans tend to have shorter eggs legs and longer arms and torsos um and they structure their society after military hierarchies um 
but we're going to be Bregan instead of one of these generic names. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. So Hobgoblin mechanics, they get eight hit points from being a Hobgoblin. Hobgoblin. And we might get a heritage to go with our Hobgoblinness, which is a sort of element within being a Hobgoblin. So we get... Um, a penalty to our wisdom. That's fun. But in exchange, we get a boost to our intelligence and our constitution. Up to 12. And I think we get, and we get one more that is free. I think we will probably put that in strength because I'm picturing playing a sort of smacky, you know, hit people with forged, uh, metal type character the way that I often like to play. Um, all right, we are size medium. We move at 25 feet per round, so a little slower than some other people. Um, we have our intelligence, constitution, and strength boosted and our wisdom penalized. Um, we get a couple of languages which go... Let me see. Languages down here. We get common. We get goblin. And we get additional languages equal to your intelligence modifier if it's positive. We also get dark vision, so that's cool. Um, senses. Dark vision. Um, see in darkness and dim light just as well as in bright light, but dark vision is black and white. So we can't see color in the dark, but that's okay for our dark vision thing. We also have a penalty from our low wisdom to see in things right now. So anyway, um, I don't see anything about, oh, Hobgoblin heritages. Um, select a heritage at first level to reflect abilities passed down from your ancestors or common to those of your ancestry in the environment where you were born or, born or grew up. So Elfbane, Runt Boss, Short Shanks, Smoke Worker, Steel Skin, War March, and Warren Bread. Um <laughs> uh, so War March, that looks pretty cool. Steel Skin looks pretty cool. Um Short Shanks looks pretty cool. I think we will choose War March Hobgoblin. Well, I don't know. Short Shanks looks really cool. Um, let's do Short Shanks. Short Shanks Hobgoblin. So, what does that give us? Your longer tor you have longer a longer torso and broader shoulders than most hobgoblins, making your legs seem short by comparison. This gives you a strong muscular core and lowers your center of gravity. Features that assist you in riding and climbing, and you've trained at riding in a saddle from an extremely early age. You gain the ride feat. So let's go to feats. That is a skill feat, and that is going to be ride. And we'll fill in what it is later. Um, you also. Not flat-footed while you climb. Um, so I think we will put that under short shanks ride feet plus not flat-footed while climbing. Cool, cool, cool. And then we also get some stuff for being a hobgoblin in general, if I remember. We get a first level hobgoblin feat as well. So I guess we should look through some of those. Um, do, 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 do. 
vigorous health, stone face, sneaky, remorseless lash, leech clipper, weapon familiarity, hobgoblin lore, cantorian reinforcement, and alchemical scholar. Let's see what remorseless lash does. Um, you're skilled at beating a foe when their morale is already breaking. When you succeed at a melee weapon strike against a frightened foe, the f that foe can't reduce their frightened condition below one until the beginning of your next turn. Oh, that's cool. Um, but I also think that sneaky and vigorous health might be really good. Sneaky allows us to move a little faster while sneaking and vigorous health um, hmm, hmm, hmm. let's do vigorous health because that looks cool enough. Um, do, do, do vigorous health. Um, whenever you would gain the drained condition, you can attempt a DC seven. 17 flat check on a success you don't gain the drained condition so that's kind of a cool way to reflect that we have a, a, a sort of health to us the sneaky one might be a little better um, objectively in some ways but i don't care that seems cool um, hobgoblin, 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 close that bit. All right, we have an ancestry. Now we need to do a background. So we are going to do a deep background. Um, so the things that we need to do is we're going to start with, Let's do slash R, 1D100, and we'll do the large family table. 37 gives us three. Determining number of family members you grew up with as an active part of your life, or 1D% on the following table. So we have three main family members, um, three close family members, um, mm -hmm. if you grew up with three or more family members, you had to mediate family conflicts and negotiate a crowded home, add a charisma ability boost and a dexterity ability boost to your options. Plus, plus, uh, or plus dex. All right. Um, homeland. Our homeland is highly formative. Um, if a goblin, subtract four. So 1d20 minus four slash r1d20 minus four is a six, a simple village. We grew up in a simple village and that gives us Herbalism lore, midwifery lore, milling lore, canning lore, lore of local products or options. So this is cool. Basically, it um, has a, a whole thing that allows you um, to kind of build your, your options for your um, particular background. So we are going to roll another slash R 1D 20 for our major childhood event. And we got a 20. Um, doo -doo -doo. You win, you distinguish yourself at an early age when you won a competition. This might have been a martial contest of arms, a showing of apprentice magicians, high magicians, high stakes gambling or something more mundane like an eating contest add a fascinating performance skill feat to your background options one a competition fascinating performance skill feat um to do, do, do influential associate 
is another 1e20 slash r 1e20 is an 8. The fiend you dealt with or were possessed by a fiend who lent you power at a great time at a time of great need. Some part of it remains inside you, influencing you toward destructive ends. Add a strength ability boost to your background options. Um, influenced by a fiend plus. Cool, 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 and then relationships. And this has to do with um, relationships to other PCs as options. Um, so I will do one inspiring and one challenging relationship just to see what we get. So that's slash R to the 12. And we will assume that those are for the PCs or something else. Um, religious students. Religious students, allies, and a six is privileged position, privileged position, challenge, and that gives us student of the canon. Or do, 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 do quick identification as options. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so that is our background stuff, and we I guess have to choose what we are going to take for this. Um, so we can do two ability boosts each to a different ability score, training in a lower skill, and one skill feat or piece of equipment, a skill feat, um, like, so for instance, quick identification, mm -hmm. fun, I think we will take quick identification as our feet because we had action options for that um what might we want to use as a hmm, 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 hmm i don't know the barbarian thing we could be a barbarian as our class which is all about like constitution and strength in a lot of ways that seems like that might be pretty cool but quick identification we could have like an occultism thing there yeah let's do that so what we're going to do is we are going to boost our we're going to boost our dexterity and our strength as our two boosts so we're going to do 12 and we're going to do 14 there and then we are going to nope details um we grew up in a simple village um and so that gives us a number of lores i think we will choose like herbalism lore because that sort of fits for a barbarian um herbalism lore and we are trained in that um and it uses our intelligence probably yeah classic um, and then we also get, let me double check. Um, we got our, and we're going to do the quick identification feat with occultism as our thing. Um, so let's do occultism to trained and then feats, uh, skill feats, quick identification options. Cultism. Yeah, so that is going to be our thing for this character. Um, what else do we need? I think that is the end of background stuff. So let me double check background and then we need to choose a class. So we are going to choose a barbarian and that gives us a bonus to a further bonus to strength. So we're up to 16 strength. Um, do, 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 do as a barbarian we get a couple of cool things so we get um, expert in perception so that's good 
we get expert in fortitude, expert in fortitude, trained in reflex, and expert in will. Um, yeah, cool, cool stuff there. Um, we get trained in athletics. And we get a number of further skills equal to three plus your intelligence modifier, which is one. So four more skills um, trained in simple weapons, martial weapons, and unarmed attacks. So we'll be trained there. Trained in light armor, medium armor, and unarmored. Um, light unarmored plus light medium is trained and so we're going to end up when we pick our armor we will use that um, and we are trained in barbarian class dc cool 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 class features we get our ancestry and background stuff we get a barbarian feat so let's do um barbarian Feet there. We also get initial proficiencies, rage and instinct. Your rage wells up from a dominant instinct, one learned from a tradition or that comes naturally to you. Your instinct gives you an ability, requires you to avoid certain behaviors, grants you increased damage and resistances at higher levels, and allows you to select feats tied to your instinct. And we also get rage. So we will put barbarian rage as another thing that we get and we'll move that to the top because that's obviously a big deal um all right you deal an additional two additional damage with melee strikes additional damage is halved if your weapon or unarmed attack is agile minus one penalty to ac can't use actions with concentrate unless they also have the rage trait you can seek while raging you also get some temporary hit points equal to your level plus your constitution modifier cool 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 um so i'm not going to fill out all of that information but that's cool stuff and obviously we can set up some of that stuff automatically um i think there is maybe a is so raging doesn't look like it's a condition on the list but maybe you can set up a custom condition for it i don't know that would be cool um, yeah, so, um, we need to choose an instinct. Um, so there are animal instincts, there are dragon instincts, there's fury instincts. <laughs> Giant instinct. spirit instinct superstition instinct i think we might choose an animal instinct because that sounds cool <laughs> and um you rage you gain a chosen animal's unarmed attack or attacks hmm so that's unarmed stuff uh, maybe we don't want to be animal. We could do dragon, though. That sounds cool. That gives some, like, you get, like, a breath weapon. That is awesome. Um, Yeah, let's be, like, a red dragon or something as our dragon instinct for our... Barbarian. Red dragon instinct barbar barbarian. Background is e. Ground. Um, XP is zero. Dragon. Um, and maybe that there's a suggestion that maybe like uh, you watched a dragon burn your village or something. So that seems like that could be really cool. Um, let's do three hero points because that's what you start with. All right, so dragon instinct. Um, I think we respect this particular dragon. Um, 
respect red dragons. Um, we also get some stuff for... Um, we can uh, increase the additional damage from Rage from 2 to 4 and changes the damage type to match that of your Dragon's Breath weapon instead of the damage type for your weapon or unarmed attack. Cool. Um, specialization ability. There's some other bonuses there. And you resist piercing damage and the damage type of the Dragon's Breath weapon when we are Raging. So that looks very cool. Um, we need to now look for some barbarian feats. Um, what sort of things um, do raging intimidation sounds pretty cool. Acute vision, adrenaline rush. Draconic Arrogance is only for Dragon Instinct stuff, so we might want to look at that. Uh, raging Intimidation. While you're raging, you're demoralized and scared to death actions. Gain the Rage trait, allowing you to use them while raging. As soon as you meet the prerequisites for the skill feats, Intimidating Glare and Scared to Death, you gain those feats. That sounds dope. Um, we already have Dark Vision, so we don't need Acute Vision. Adrenaline Rush. While you're raging, increase your encumbered and maximum bulk bonus by two. Plus one status bonus to athletics checks to lift heavy objects, escape, or force open. Nah, that's not for me. Plus two status bonus throw to saving throws against emotion effects if we want to be draconically arrogant. But raging intimidation sounds super cool. So we are going to take that one. Raging intimidation. That's our thing for us. Um, doo -doo -doo. Your fury fills your foes with fear. Oh, and we also need to do some attribute bonuses and some more skills. Um, so I think we will, for attribute bonuses, what all will we do? We will do um, an 18 in strength. We will boost our constitution to 14. Um, I think we will go ahead and put our wisdom up to 10, since that'll help with our perception stuff. And we will boost our charisma to 12 with our raging stuff, because that seems cool. Um, yeah, raging intimidation. So that is going to be our barbarian feat. And then what else might we need? Um, hmm, 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 hmm. um, we need some of our skill proficiencies, and then we are closing in on the end. I guess we will need to do our um, equipment stuff. Um, so skills that we might want to have. Uh, let's see. We get four more um, plus athletics, which we already have. Um, so intimidation seems good. Um, we already have occultism. Something like medicine or nature seems pretty good, but survival seems good too for a barbarian. So survival, so that's two. And then let's do uh, maybe thievery. That seems good. And maybe stealth as our sort of thing and be a sort of kind of conan -y sort of, you know, thiefy barbarian, I guess. I don't know. That seems kind of cool. Yeah, I think that'll be that'll be our thing. Um, excellent. And uh, yeah, so that is and we didn't boost our intelligence. So that's the four that we get for being a barbarian. Three plus intelligence modifier is four, plus athletics, plus uh, occultism. So I think that is everything. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. And now we need, I think we just need our equipment. And then obviously if we were gonna play this character long-term, we would wanna fill out a lot of the stuff that our um, character would have. Um, oh, and we get another languages, and so we'll probably get Draconic. B. 
because we are a, a dragon instinct barbarian. That sounds dope. Um, buy equipment. Let's see. There are some really good on the um, archives of Nethys thing. They have a lot of like barbarian. Uh, they have they have kits from the core rulebook and stuff. So um, that seems like that would be good. Um, four javelins. No, I would like a great axe or a great sword instead. Um, hide armor. Let's see. Padded armor. Hide armor is medium. Scale mail is... What's the difference between... Hmm. I guess it's because it's leather versus composite. Um, it seems like we probably don't want... I don't, I don't think we can afford some of that. Um, high tier stuff, and we have a, well, we only have plus one dex, so, hmm, <laughs> we could, so hide gives plus three AC bonus, I don't think we want chainmail, because chainmail has the noisy bits, if we could afford a breastplate, that would be good, too, but let me remember, I don't remember how much. Um, so we have 11 GP left over, so we could potentially upgrade from hide armor to a breastplate for an extra couple of gold, an extra six gold. So let's do that. We will get ourselves breastplate. And that gives us a cap of one and a trained and it is medium armor, and it gives us an AC bonus of plus four. And also we have uh, no speed penalty because our strength is high enough. Um, and no check penalty either because our strength is high enough. Um, I think that's the way, I, if I remember correctly, that's the way that it works for armor is that your strength allows you to no longer take the armor's check penalty, decrease the speed penalty by five feet. So yeah, no penalty there. Um, I guess you could fill out that sort of stuff and it might automatically calculate. Um, but yeah, AC 17. And so that leaves us with, let's go to the inventory and how many gold pieces. So that would leave us, I'm gonna have to do some math real quick. Um, we had 11 GP left over, so we are down to five GP left over. We have our hide armor. We have, um, we're going to get probably a great axe or a great sword. Let's see what the difference between them is. Great axe and great sword are both D12. Axe has sweep, so let's use that one because that sounds dope. So, uh, great axe, and it uses our strength, and we are trained, and it doesn't give us any bonuses there, and it is not agile, but it does have sweep. Um, when you attack with this weapon, you get a plus one circumstance bonus on your attack roll if you already attempted to attack a different target this turn using this weapon. So if you're, you know, smacking a whole number of enemies in the area, that is uh, useful. It is a martial weapon and it is group axes. It does um, one die of size d12. 12 and it does slashing damage we get our strength we don't get any weapon specialization or any of that stuff um other um i don't think there's anything there critical damage yep yep great axe so let's do a great axe strike oh look we rolled a nat one on our first attempt classic um, do, do, do. All right, so that is our great axe set up. 
and that reduces if we want to get the javelins that'll reduce our gold a little bit more so that's down to three gp um we have an adventures pack with a bunch of the stuff that it comes with um Backpack, bedroll, 10 pieces of chalk, flint and steel, 50 feet of rope, two weeks rations, soap, five torches, and a water skin. Um, and we also get a grappling book. In addition to our adventures pack. And then we don't have any type of, I guess we could get a backup, like a battle axe and a steel shield. That might be useful. Yeah, as backup weapons. So we have the great axe plus those. So let's do that battle axe and steel shield, and that'll be all of our money. So I guess we're not going to get any of the other stuff. Um, so yeah, let's do it. And I'm not going to fill out everything right now. Battle axe, because um, we already did our main weapon, our great axe, but I'll fill in that stuff later. And we will shield name steel shield. And it is giving us a um, on a whip. So we have a, a sort of tankier version. And I think, oh, we also need to do our hit points. We get 12 hit points per level for our class. So that brings us up to 22. That's useful. I uh, almost forgot about that. So I think we have, we're going to be some sort of chaotic chaotic badass for Bragan, which is not necessarily a great name for this character anymore. We might change that name later, but you know, um, I came up with the name before I created the character and then I don't remember what traits we might get. I guess I could go back through, um, but I think that is basically everything for this character. So obviously I would go through and fill out a lot of the stuff a little bit more um, thoroughly as we get into kind of actually playing if we were going to use this character long term right that it seems like the sort of thing where you would want to you know fill out a lot of the stuff that i just sort of left generic um and you know like including like you know fill out the stats for our weapons and all of that sort of stuff all of that would be useful right um and and the inventory stuff and all that I'm disappointed that the sheet doesn't have some options for some of the really cool alternate rules that I really like in the Game Mastery Guide. Um, I guess we'll see. Maybe there's there might be like another. I don't think there's another Pathfinder 2 sheet, but I guess I will check to see. Um, but obviously you could you don't need to play with the Roll20 sheet necessarily, or you could do your own tinkering or whatever else you feel like is, is appropriate. Um, but yeah, it would be it would be definitely be cool to have some of those alternate options a little more um, built in to this sheet. But maybe there's an alternate sheet that has some of those. Otherwise, I think that is going to be everything for this episode of character creation. We have Bregan, the short shanks hobgoblin, who is a red dragon instinct barbarian and has this kind of custom background that we came up with. Um, but yeah, pretty cool character, pretty, pretty cool stuff. He's, um, you know, pretty wicked, pretty deadly, all of that sort of stuff. And um, ready to uh, go out, kick ass and take names, all of that sort of stuff. Get raging as barbarians do, you know, classic. Um, anyway, that is, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So um, anyway, and it didn't even take, I mean, it was longer than some of the other episodes, but it wasn't that long, right? You could definitely, it's not the sort of thing where you're gonna spend, you know, four hours trying to build a character. Although admittedly, I have built more than a few Pathfinder 2nd Edition characters historically um, and all of that sort of stuff. So it's one of those things that I think it's gonna depend a lot on your kind of pre-existing familiarity with the system. Um, if you sort of know what you're trying to do a little more it's going to go a lot faster and if you are trying to kind of figure out all of the different things that you might be able to do it's not going to go as fast so anyway that's a, a whole thing um but yeah that is uh pathfinder second edition um bragan the short shanks hobgoblin barbarian so anyway pretty cool stuff pretty cool stuff 
Um, so yeah, and like I said, I, I totally only used the archives of Nethys website for all of the mechanical stuff. I guess I probably could have added the Roll20 Pathfinder 2 compendium to this game if I had been planning ahead and been able to drag and drop stuff, but I didn't think to do that. And I don't have any of the um, advanced uh, player's guide stuff or, or any of the other stuff. Um, so I don't know if you have to pay for all of that sort of stuff for the compendium. You might, but I don't remember for certain. So anyway, it's just one of those things that I feel like it was fine to just copy some stuff out for all of this. Um, so yeah, fun stuff, fun stuff. Um, that is going to be it for today. So I hope everybody is doing well, staying safe, staying healthy, having lots of fun, playing lots of different games. I've been Arlen Walker. I've been live from Helms Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.